All right, so today's tech talk is about Swift as a server-side language. And uh, I'll go through a couple of uh, items here. The agenda is first talking about Swift and why and how this can be a good language to learn. And the, sec the second thing would be more talking about Swift as actually a server-side language. So the first question I want to try to answer is like, why Swift? And I went through, a lot, I mean, a lot of blogs and a lot of readings about uh, why they consider a good language. The thing that I like the most is that it's open source, and uh, most of the languages right now are like start with uh, open source projects and uh, as an open source project. And this really gives the uh, developer the chance to shape a young language. And uh, in particular, uh, the community for Swift is growing a lot. It's, I think, one of the newest languages has been out for just a few years. And also, Swift is a, a language that, I mean, as many of the modern languages, is built with the future in mind. I just wanted to mention a few of the uh, improvements, few of the features that makes this language uh, powerful and good. I think I strongly recommend language that everybody, every developer should learn. Uh, they kind of kept, so Swift has been originated after, as it's been created after many years that Apple, Apple was adopting Objective-C. And I would call, well, Objective-C can be considered a little bit the father. More than the father, father of Swift, it could be, sorry, uh, yeah, more than the father of Swift, it could be a little bit the ankle since like they kept really just few things from Objective-C, but they tried to keep the uh, best ones. One of them was, for example, the garbage collector that for uh, Objective-C required several years before they decided to implement the automatic reference counting. And this has been something that they moved uh, to Swift as well with some improvement. Also, they spent a lot of effort, especially in the recent years, on the error handling, and they added the support for uh, inferred types. They added some of the good patterns that we have in functional programming, like uh, filters, maps, these kind of patterns that are common in JavaScript as well. And also, but it's something very important, they the way Swift works is similar to the way Objective-C works, so it uses the LLMV compiler, which makes all the code that you build. Uh, it's native on the machine, it doesn't use uh, any middle layer, any uh, virtual machine, like for example, what Java does. And just a quick graph to show performances. You can see here, like from the first version of Swift compared to what Objective-C was. Well, Objective-C is kind of the reference here. Uh, the only reason why it fluctuates a bit is because they changed the version where they were uh, doing this benchmark. You can actually test that out on this repo. They were doing these benchmarks on different devices with different uh, iOS version. But you can see like that from version, I think 1.1 to the current version, the official one is 2.2, it reached kind of the lower bound. So performances are uh, have really improved a lot in the last few years of development, and that's thanks to the big community that is working on that. Uh, from three se to two seconds and a half, it turned out to shuffle one million objects is now about one second, so a lot of improvement. Uh, one other important feature of Swift, it's a uh, easy language to learn. I would say easy -ish learn uh, language to learn personally, but uh, apparently uh, they asked, well, every, every year Stack Overflow releases a survey and it looks like uh, the question, what's the language that you like to develop the most? Uh, developers answer with Swift, most of them. Uh, you can check the data on the Stack Overflow uh, web page. And, well, I don't know if this is really meaningful, but I also try, I was playing with the uh, uh, a little bit with Google uh, Trends, and uh, uh, this is not really fair because I compare Swift with JavaScript. When I think actually the research, the query research, the query search that people do are more like Node.js or AngularJS. But I just wanted to show a little bit uh, the growth 
or Swift uh, in the last few years. And you can see like the spikes as soon as every release was done for Swift. And uh, well, that's a little bit about uh, the introduction for Swift. But about besides the language, uh, one of the power of Swift is due to its tools. And Apple really already released three big tools for that. One was already adopted by Objective-C is the X, is Xcode, which is, to my opinion, one of the best IDE a developer can have. It offers really everything that a developer is uh, The Playground has been introduced on purpose for Swift by Apple, and it's, it's very useful to test code quickly, to have just snippets of code that run uh, in a e lightweight environment. And the package manager, that is kind of the newest thing of the, uh, these three uh, tools, it's, been, it's basically similar to what in Objective-C was CocoaPods. Uh, it just like allows you to import uh, dependencies for the main project. And being uh, open source languages, developers also worked out other tools. I want to mention here two tools that are uh, released by IBM. One is uh, a sort of package manager. It's more a package catalog, catalog that IBM released, but has a very good explanation and it's very well done. The second one is still a sandbox, uh, still a playground like the one that Apple did, but it's online. It runs on the IBM cloud. I've already seen uh, all the Stack Overflow uh, answers talking about Swift, where people was referring to the uh, to the playground uh, that IBM released, and that works very well. It's very quick, and I think it's very very well done. So I think uh, there there were several good points about uh, Swift. I want to mention one more that is, as you probably know, not just iOS. Actually, already Objective C was not just iOS. It was a uh, phone, uh, well, mobile, Mac, watch, TV OS. But Swift has been also experimented in Android and successfully so far, even if it's a very early stage. And what we will be talking on, talking about today is Swift as a server-side language. And there are several different frameworks that try to do that. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about the IBM framework. Uh, IBM is the major, is one of the major contrib contributor for Swift. They they use Swift internally for their apps and. To give you, uh, as a side fact, uh, IBM supports three languages currently. One is Java, one is Node.js, and uh, one is Swift. So they are like the major contributor for uh, Swift. And here is uh, here are a little bit of details about Kitura, that is the web framework that IBM released. It's they try to reproduce a little bit the behavior there of Express.js. It's, again, being Swift-based, it's a compiled native code. Uh, it's type safety, like I think uh, Java ECMA 6 is where we have let const. Uh, so it uses let const bar, all these uh, uh, properties of type safety languages. It uses, it allows the, use, the developer to use optionals that I think it's something that also Java 8 has. And uh, it, it has a very good multi-threading engine that is based on the Grand Central Dispatch, which is something that for iOS developer has been uh, developed during many years. So it's a pretty uh, stable and well-taught uh, tool for multi-threading. And since it became over, uh, open source, they spent even more effort on this, and now it, reach, it's, it has very good performances. And again, where can we uh, deploy our server uh, based on Kitura? Of course, we can use uh, Darwin, macOS, but also currently supports Ubuntu, Vagrant, and Docker, and the list is growing uh, day by day, and there are many other uh, Linux version that the users are trying to uh, to use Kitura uh, for. Finally, one just single note about uh, the cloud tools that IBM uh, provide. So there, they, let me just 
show it quickly. There is a nice app here. I just want to, well, I'm not going to spend time on this, but uh, IBM uh, created these cloud tools, and uh, it's very easy to develop a app for a server and deploy that on the IBM cloud. And it's just like one click. We need you need to have a account with the on the IBM cloud, but that's something that it's a good starting where um, to, when when trying to experiment a little bit on Swift. And finally, I wanted to mention the last project related to Swift as a server side language, and it's called Perfect. Uh, it's an alternative to Kitura. Uh, we're not we're not going to talk about that today, but I still wanted to mention uh, this project that has a big community as well. A very humble name. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, very humble name. All right, so let me close this. Let's start a little bit the coding session. I want to show a little bit how to build quickly a web server, and uh, we also try to use a, a database to store some data. We use CouchDB. Actually, I wanted to show a last thing about uh, the presentation. Uh, yeah, we're going to use a database that is called CouchDB. I don't know if you have seen the tech talk that Roberto did a few uh, months ago. CouchDB is in the CAP theorems uh, located in the kind of partition tolerance side. So uh, uh, it was something about database. So if we have consistency availability, uh, the skill that CouchDB has is uh, uh, partition tolerance. So it's the system continues to operate despite arbitrary partition due to network failures. In fact, it's designed for a, a web application, basically. And that's what we'll be uh, trying to trying to use as a database and as a connector. All right, let's start here from the terminal and let's build our first uh, project. Um, the first thing we want to do is to create a, well, okay, I created in the desktop folder, but I guess uh, it's going to be still understandable. The first thing we want to do is create an a empty project. And we do that through the Swift package in it, and there we also added a flag to make it executable. Uh, I'll explain better later what's that for. And we have, at this, uh, when we init the repo, we have automatically a package.swift, which actually I want to open and show. So that's what I was, that I was saying about the package manager. So it's, Let's give a name. Let's. That's it. This is the current project we're working on, and we will call it Kitura on the couch, since we're, we're using CouchDB as a database. Uh, and we also want, we also want to add some dependencies on the on this uh, project that we're building. And actually. Uh, much. All right, yeah, so we added some dependencies. Specifically, we want to add the, the web framework, Kitura, and we want to add the connector for CouchDB. And we can save and try to run it, so, and try to build. So in order to build, we need to just type swift, swift build. You're gonna see, uh, well, this is first of all, it's a little bit slow, it's gonna take like 30 seconds. It's downloading, it's downloaded uh, uh, all the GitHub repo needed for uh, compiling the project. It, it takes care of all the dependencies. You're gonna see a couple of errors here, and the reason is that I'm currently having installed on my uh, computer also the older version of Xcode, and uh, it's trying to run some it's trying to run some plugins inside of Xcode that are related to that version and are not compatible with Xcode 8. And Xcode 8 is the version of Xcode that you need to have in order to try all these things. So if you want to try at home, uh, download Xcode 8 first. So here's 
almost done. Uh, looks like it's compiling all the module. There is a, there are automatically some loggers, some uh, uh, libraries to handle in JSON that are dependencies. And I guess that's it. Uh, let's go up again. All right. And the next step that uh, I recommend is to create the Xcode project for that, so we can use actually Xcode. Well, technically we could, we could use just VI to do this, but uh, I, mean, I strongly recommend to use Xcode. So let's open it. And automatically, let's see, uh, we want to work on the source sources folder. Automatically, it created a main file for us. Uh, it also created a target that is execu executable, and that's the one that uh, we use the flag for. So let's try to run the app so far. And we can also show the console here. Is this big enough? Yeah, it's building. <coughs> oh, here we go. Hello world. All right. Uh, well, that's fine. Let's make it a little bit more complex and let's try to add Kitura to that. <coughs> and let's write a Hello Kitura <coughs> server. Uh, here we, we are creating a, a router, which is a Kitura Plus. And uh, inside the router, we're creating an endpoint called hello. And the request, uh, we, we're not really using the request, we use the response. We set the header to be plain text, and we respond with a status OK, and we send hello Kitura. Let's run the server this time. And uh, here we are just setting the port and starting the server. Uh, Let's open Chrome. Sorry, log out almost 8090. Well, this is just uh, the standard page. If you uh, if you have uh, the main route, we want to actually go in the endpoint that we just created, the hello endpoint, and we have hello. Mm, somehow, let's make it smaller. Uh, okay, now let's use more. So we have hello Kitura which is the first hello world for the, this framework that we made. Uh, next step, let's try to manipulate a little bit the request. And let's try to, to get information from the request. We have a get, and we try to get to read from the query in the get exactly here. So here we still do exactly the same thing as before, but at this line, we're trying to read from the query parameters uh, the, at the key user what's the value for that. And I guess let's run the server again, which is the best way to test if we're doing right. Hello user. Um, we'll write it here uh, in our get. We're sending key user value Grio, and it is returning hello Grio, which is good. I want to show something more. If I try that again and I add a breakpoint to Xcode, <coughs> it's actually working with break, uh, with breakpoints too. Uh, well, being a, it, it, it's something that like. Uh, it's good that like the binding works fine, being a pretty new language. Uh, let's stop the server and do something uh, a little bit more complicated. Let's add a, a database to here. Let's add CouchDB, and we need to set it up. Uh, we need to set up the connection properties for that. That uh, the minimum amount of information we need to provide are where we want to run it, what port we want to run it, and if we want that to be secure or not. 
and Xcode is complaining a bit because uh, he wants us to add the uh, correct framework as well. So we need to import CouchDB, and we also need to import something to handle uh, JSON, usually like this library called Swifty JSON. So now we, are, we, are, we don't have any more error. This is just creating the connector for the database, and we call that uh, database here. And uh, this is assuming that we have a database running on the local machine called Kitura. So let's do that. Uh, CouchDB and uh, don't remember it. So what's the port? 5984. All right, this is the main uh, web page that you have when you install. CouchDB on your local machine. We want to create a database called Kitura now. <coughs> All right, so we have now our database. There we go. So now we're ready to connect to the database. Uh, let's add a method to show all the users that we have currently, or I mean at least show all the records that we have currently in the database and uh, we have it here, so just put it up a little bit. So we still do everything. Well, we still create a route for that, and this time we have a database, which is our, our connector. And inside that connector, we call the method retrieve all, and this is the callback, which just says what to do if there is an error while reading into the database, and what to do if there is no error there. So in the case that the reading was successfully, we want to print console message, like successfully fetch user, and also we want to send the user a response on the uh, web page that the user is visiting. So let's test that. We need to run the server at some point. All right, yeah, so it looks like it worked and it's showing the fetch, uh, it's showing the list of rows, uh, records that we have in the database, and currently it's showing an empty array because we don't have any, uh, we don't have any uh, record yet. So we need to create an add user method which, uh, well, I'm just like pasting snippets of code, pasting snippets of code. Please interrupt me if there is any line of the code that is not clear. Uh, I didn't want to write them manually because it would, have, uh, so it would have been a little bit of time and also I would have done like hundreds of typos. Uh, all right, I have here the create add user method, sorry. And this is for adding a user. Again, we just like do everything the same, we respond with a message, and we also need to create actual the record into the database. And to create the record into the database, uh, in this case, I just wanted to add the username to the record and a date. So to know, uh, one interesting thing is that like, it's, it, it's using what people that be working in uh, iOS uh, environment has been. So if you, were, if you are a, a, an iOS developer, you've seen this method like for ages, and now they're like still all ported on a server, which is, especially if you're an iOS developer, it's good to see that like the language that you already knew is now able to work on a completely different environment. So here we are creating a new JSON, which has a date, the current moment, the current time, and the username, which is the username that came, that came from the from the uh, from the request here. <laughs> Let's run the server and try to create a user. And uh, we have the endpoint already 
for add user and this is responding with OK, add username. We can now check if we really added a user. There we go. So that's what we have as a result. We, we now have one role, one document into the database, and the document has username, real, and the current timestamp. So I guess this is everything I wanted to show for this demo. Uh, it's just like few simple operations, but uh, in basically 10 minutes or so, we were able to uh, create a web app and add a database layer on that, the connector. Uh, just wanted to show a little bit to people that come from the iOS world that like methods are very similar, where everything works with the same logic. People that are from outside, are, like it's pretty simple to learn and looks like somehow similar to JavaScript even if there are some differences. They try to collect a little bit like the best uh, of uh, both worlds. Uh, they, I think uh, it's a good opportunity and the community is uh, growing a lot so it's still really, uh, it, it, it's still at a stage where like uh, a contribution from a developer really matters. And one last thing that I wanted to talk about is about the cons. <coughs> currently, Swift, oh. as I said, is, is on, in, development mo in development currently, and this has some problems. I, while building this demo, I noticed that, like, okay, uh, sometimes the, it's not ready for production, basically. It's something that uh, the, the version 3 of Swift, which is the one that I'm using in this demo, has not been released officially uh, yet. So what, it's still a beta, and it has, uh, of course it has a price to work with a beta. There are definitely many snapshots that uh, are currently out there in the web. I'm just gonna show you here that like, in my computer currently I have four snapshots of, the, of Swift, and not all the libraries work with the same snapshot. So that's kind of a, a it's kind of tricky sometimes when you try to develop and you have different snapshots. And the other note is about the package manager. Due to these reasons, it doesn't always work with all libraries when you have to mix and match frameworks and libraries. And another note about the package manager, which was the third thing that I noticed that as a cons about this language, is that it doesn't handle well dependent dependencies especially when there are conflicts. So I'm pretty sure that we, when version 3 of Swift will be released officially, uh, I think in a couple of months, all these problems will be fixed. But right now, be very careful when you try to uh, play with this environment. And well, I guess uh, if there is any question about uh, just so just the, um, all the foundation work on the server side? Yes, so they tried to build, uh, and it's not 100% working, but uh, they tried to cover all the main, the core features of that. Uh, there are still updates going on, but it's almost completely covered the foundation framework. So it's not the same, it's not the Apple Foundation. It's, it's like not, it's, it's not, everything is being rewritten because the previous one was aborting from Objective-C. So all the methods have been rebuilt, rewritten for architecture uh, for Darwin and for, uh, for uh, Ubuntu and other distribution of uh, Unix, Linux. Uh, I actually want to add that like, I really recommend to take a look at the uh, last WWDC video about uh, Swift as a server uh, language because they explain a little bit about more about the architecture. It's less code and more about how they did this uh, for both uh, Linux distributions and Darwin. I have another question. Uh, so where it says uh, line 57, well, why do you have to, is that a cast? to any object? Uh, I guess this is not really needed at this line. Uh, yeah, any object in this case is probably not needed. 
Okay. Yeah, I just didn't understand. You're just forcing basically that that guy exists. You're not really uh, setting the kind of object that it is. I haven't any except very simple ones. I played a little bit with uh, official. So there is a very good app that uh, IBM built, and it's end-to-end. -end. It's called Blue Peak, and uh, it basically provides a client app for iOS, a server app, which is uh, it works with a database, and it works uh, with some other frameworks like Watson for uh, uh, image and tag recognitions. Uh, they, they included, like, they made a full cycle end-to-end, -end, like using a workspace in Xcode where you have a project which is the iOS project and a project that is the server and it can be like deployed also on the cloud and that's very useful for to study. I personally did very simple projects uh, just for uh, testing because I don't feel it's a language that is ready for being a service side language, at least for production. It's still like a kind of just language for doing experiments. But uh, that, that specific uh, uh, workspace that they built, uh, it's an end-to-end uh, application that I think is very useful to take a look at. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you.